30 minutes to go and Amy's still done next to nothing. She's got a lobster boiled and that's it. We're moving a little bit yeah. slowly and I'm getting a little bit nervous, all right? Yeah. This is your last chance. I've got a too slow start, so I just need to get myself ahead. Yeah, and I'm just thinking how you're going to present it, if they're going to eat yeah, it. Yeah, I'm thinking salad. about it. Sorry, I'm feeling a bit stressed. Yeah, I can tell. Amy, just calm down. Just calm down there, mm -hmm. that side. So my initial plan is to serve that lobster tail whole. So I cut it open, oh, and I can see that it's raw. It's all right, keep calm. It's still very raw inside. I can't serve raw lobster. I feel like I've blown my chance of getting this last immunity pen. If you feel you want to cook it more, then we've got time to do that. Do. Yep. You could continue to steam it, or you could you um, could sear it now. So I make the decision to split it down the middle, and then cook it for a little bit longer. I'm feeling a bit stressed. Should have got started a bit quicker. Go on, fly. All I've done is boil the lobster tail and steam the legs. Make sure that lobster does not get overcooked, okay? But it looks amazing. Thank you. It Brian. looks amazing. You can do this. Yes. All right. You seem to move really fast, Amy. I've never not got anything up. Today is not going to be the first day. I have a little bit of time to get it together. Come on, Amy. Go, Amy. Come on. I'm going to give it my all to win that last immunity pen. The lobster's cooked perfectly. Yeah. I need to prep the salad ingredients. I prepare the sorrel. I've got a, a dressing I need to make. I've decided I'm going to use that prosciutto. I get it into a pan and get it crispy. Yes, I did get to, off to a slow start. I think I just got overwhelmed with different ideas. But I'm Kira now with, with Carly's mentorship. At the beginning, completely, I don't think she really knew where she was going to go, how she was bringing it all together. Now that she's got the clear idea in her head of what she's doing, now she's got the time pressure, and I just really hope that she can get it on the plate now. So you're making a mayonnaise? Yes. Decide to not waste that lobster head. Use the cleaver. Okay. Yep. All right. All right. Scoop out that lobster mustard to make the mayonnaise. The lobster mustard or the lobster brains is a very favourite ingredient of Maggie Beers. Yeah, let's get the flavour just right. People rave about it all the time. It's not something I would normally eat. I'm hoping it's going to show the judges a bit of an adventurous side, prepared to try new things. I'm watching Amy add lobster mustard to her mayonnaise. It's a pretty big risk. It could be delicious, but it's quite an unusual flavour, and I'm not sure whether it's going to work in a mayonnaise. Finishing up, we're looking good. All the components are kind of working. So the elements on the plate, we've got the radicchio, we've got the quail leg, we've got the quail breast. Just making sure that I get the balance of the sauce. Come on, Amy. Come on, Amy. God, you guys are putting on the pressure. I want it to look pretty, and that's what I'm focusing on. It's not happening. Nothing is looking on the plate like I want it to look. Looks great, John. It's gorgeous. John's dish looks gorgeous. Very modernly plated. He's really paid respect to the bitters ingredient, so it looks really good. OK, we've got one minute to go. Come on, one Amy. One minute to go. Oh. I'm really go. struggling to get this up in time. And it's like an angel comes from heaven and John appears next to me. They're regarding it as a meal, so just maybe just one. So I should just put one tail on? Yeah, that's what I always think about as well, so less is more. Going on what John's saying, are you happy with it? I actually hate it. <laughs> Grab another plate and I start doing it again. Let's look at your lobster as the highlight. It's great having John there to guide me. That's it, no more leaves. Ten. A little bit of salt Nine. on top. Nine. You got Eight. Time mix, you got your bacon. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. one. Well done, Beautiful. It's stunning. It's great. I have to come and look at yours now. <laughs> John's looks pretty, pretty amazing, and he had a lot of wonderful techniques in there. But 
I think that the sorrel and the mayonnaise and the lobster is a beautiful combination and now with the plating looking so lovely, we could have another immunity pin lurking around the house. <laughs> Waiting for judging was a little bit nerve-wracking. I hope I've managed to balance all the bitterness and the quail was not overcooked. Pan-fried quail, braised radicchio, pancetta and citrus dressing. Beautiful. Thank you. That's a pretty dish, mm. isn't it? Gorgeous dish. It's a really pretty dish. I yeah, love yeah. all the detail. The Frenching of the bones, yeah. the linear plate up, little bits of radicchio underneath. And yeah. It'd right. be interesting to see the way that radicchio has been treated because there was nothing in there for sweetness to get the sweetness. Yeah. So no sweet at all? No sweet at all. So that was the challenge for me, looking mm. at that. How are you going to get but, sweetness into but, the dish? But you've got sweetness, you bridle yeah. the bitterness with salt. Yeah. Mm. Bitterness yeah. with crisps of pancetta. Such a great combination. The only thing I'd say is it's really well caramelised, isn't it? Like, if you look, George Brown, say, that yeah. side on the breast, it, possibility that that might be overcooked. Shall we taste? Yeah, I think so. Let's do it. Curious to see how that quail breast is cooked. Mm. Is it good? Mm, nice. nice and pink? Yeah. Bit of blush. Mm. It's really um, sound and uh, comfortable. Like, it's really roasty, mm. which I like. I, I like it a lot. Lots of caramelisation. And then underneath that, you get that little ping of, of chamomile. Lovely. Yeah. Mm. Wow, chamomile and quail. It's delicious, actually. Mm. For, for me, what really makes that dish is, is, is the radicchio underneath. It's been, yeah. it's been nicely charred. It's kind of yeah. buttery. And it's, you know, there's bitterness there, for sure. But there's also sort of sweetness there as well, which it really brings the quail to life. It's not pushing the envelope in terms of culinary technique, creativity, but it's it's good. It's delicious. Yeah. And I'd be happy to sit in the restaurant and eat that and enjoy that yeah. and, and but, be comfort. The great thing about this dish is everything is just as it should be. <laughs> Anything other than perfect is really not an option at this stage of the competition. The smallest mistakes could cost you, and I'm hoping that my lobster's cooked perfectly. Poached lobster with citrus sorrel and lobster mustard mayonnaise. Wow. Mm. Hey, it looks beautifully cooked, doesn't it? Yeah, it looks beautiful. Yeah, it looks beautiful. It looks really clean. There's plenty of white plate and space to pop that lobster and make it the hero. You, you want to see more than just poached lobster, don't you? Mm, do you, if it's perfect? That's what you call uh, produce-driven cuisine, isn't it? Mm. So the grapefruit's on there, I mean, the sorrel's on there. Based on presentation, I've got no idea who cooked uh, what dish now. Let's taste it. standout thing for me is how technical it is. I mean, this lobster is perfectly yeah. good. It's, it's a wonderful way of treating a very expensive piece of, uh, of protein. And I love the sorrel, I love the grapefruit, but I, I kind of want more. You know, I'm not so fussed about the, the mayonnaise. I, I, I think that, it, for me, it would be better if it was more olive oily, more citrusy, more grapefruity. This dish is very, very proven flavours in terms of lobster, citrus, and then that salty hit of the prosciutto is such a great combination. It's kind of the Charlie's Angels of flavours all in yeah. one, isn't it? The ultimate trio. So, Amy, that's a total of 22 out of 30 for you. Well done. Thank you. Now, to your dish, John. <laughs> he is nervous. He is nervous. You Very tell. nervous. <laughs> John. Cook quail, I scored it an 8 out of 10.
loved the radicchio. Loved that because you gave it some sweetness by cooking it correctly. And also loved the way you've cooked the quail. It was perfect. Well Thank done. Thank you. John, I scored your dish. Eight out of ten. I think the thing that impressed me so much about your dish was all the detail of those elements done so perfectly. The Frenching, those little bones, the exact crispness of that prosciutto. A dish without anything out of place on it. Beautiful. Thanks, Matt. Wow. There you go, 2-8. 16 out of a possible 30, so that means you need a 6 from me or more to take out the challenge. John, I gave your dish. Nine out of ten. John? It was because of that umami from the quail, but it was also about the bitterness, those bitter flavours that you incorporated in the dish, that radecchio, but more than that, the chamomile. What a lovely touch. So, a beautiful dish. Reputation intact. Thank goodness for that. <laughs> Amy, you may have missed out on that immunity pin, that last immunity pin for this competition, but you know what? You did yourself proud. That was a really difficult tasting for us because it was very difficult to split who cooked which dish. And honestly, until you told us, we didn't really know. So that's uh, it's a feather in your cap and it shows you how far you've come in this competition. Well Thanks, done. Really good. Well done. Thank you. It's not the worst thing in the world, but it was the last chance. I wanted it. I really wanted that pin.